Welcome to Most Haunted Live. This is the first night out of three and we are on the hunt for the ghosts of the East Anglian Witch Trials. It's going to be an amazing three nights, but we're here with the Most Haunted Live crew and of course we've got Derek Okora. Derek, what are you expecting to happen here, not just tonight, but for the rest of the time that we're on the hunt for these ghosts? I feel over the next three nights, Ivy, you know, it's going to be very eerie. Oh no. Be prepared to be very scared. Oh no, I don't like the sound of that at all. So see, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Welcome to Most Haunted Live on this Easter bank holiday weekend. Yes, this is a trilogy as we investigate witchcraft and sorcery here deep in East Anglia. This is the largest live ghost hunt in the world. And we're in Essex as we uncover the steps of the witch finder general, Matthew Hopkins, who committed hundreds of people to their death. And we are in Lawford, a sleepy village in Essex, with our Most Haunted Live audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening and welcome to all of you. Why are we in a small village hall, I hear you ask? Well, the reason that we're here is because this is typical of many village halls across England where interrogation of people who they thought were witches were carried out. And uh, uh, with that interrogation also went torture. So that is why we are in this small village hall in Lawford. So let's have a look at exactly where we are. Here we go. This is East Anglia, right here. Now we're going to start in Canoodon there, which is exactly where Derek and Yvette and the rest of the team are, 70 miles from where we are. We're also going to Manningtree, where Matthew Hopkins' uh, Reign of Terror started. Chelmsford, of course, the witch trials there and Missley, which is where Matthew Hopkins died. And we're right in the middle here with the interactive hub in Lawford. Now, in Canoodon, I said that's where Yvette, Derek, and the rest of the team are. There are three locations, St. Nicholas Church, the Anchor Inn, and finally, the Crossroads. Those are the locations that Yvette, Derek, and the rest of the team are going to be investigating tonight. This is a trilogy. It's three nights. And the fun and adventure starts now. So let's say hello to Yvette and Derek as we join them in Canood. And good evening to you. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> we actually, I think we should just explain something um, quickly. We've only just been standing in the graveyard for a short amount of time. Already the battery power on the light has gone. We just heard, we, there's a light over there in the corner. I don't know if Carl can pick that up. It's gone over on its own. There's no wind here whatsoever. And behind us, there is a, a, a gate and it's just rattled all on its own. There's no wind here whatsoever. So we've lost our light, light source and we're doing everything we can uh, to get back on. So already things are starting to happen. So um, David, <laughs> it's not nice at all, at all. A good start, thank you very much Yvette. Now, I told you about Matthew Hopkins. He was a relatively young man. He was the self-proclaimed witch finder general. He committed hundreds of people to their deaths right here, right here in East Anglia. He was one of the most notorious and violent people in history. Here's his story. In the late 16th and early 17th century, a terrible scourge swept through England. Men and women throughout the country were tried and put to death on the grounds of suspected devil worship and witchcraft. Self-appointed witch finder general Matthew Hopkins is perhaps the most notorious name associated with these sinister crimes. Born in the 1620s in Little Wenham, Suffolk, Hopkins was the son of a Puritan minister. After failing to make his name as a lawyer, he moved to Manningtree, where he pursued a lucrative career in witch hunting. His first victim, a one-legged, toothless old woman by the name of Elizabeth Clark, was hanged at Seafield Bay, Manningtree. During his reign of terror between 1644 and 1646, Hopkins was responsible for the persecution and execution of more than 230 alleged witches throughout the Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex countryside. Extreme sleep deprivation, severe beatings and starvation were used to extract confessions before Hopkins sliced his victims in an attempt to prove that witches didn't bleed. His favourite torture was the infamous swimming. If they sank, they were innocent. If they floated, they were found guilty. 
and hang by the neck until dead. Hopkins died in 1647, but his demise remains a mystery. Some believe he simply died of consumption, but folklore insists he was tried as a witch and drowned in the pond of Misley, and his body lies in the ruins of the old church near Misley Heath. His legacy lived on, and the myths surrounding witchcraft spread through the counties. The witches of Canudon, Essex, were believed to be able to stop machinery and wagons with one penetrating look, and some were suspected of sending plagues of lice against their enemies. To this day, the supposed ghosts of the witches still haunt many of the villages in East Anglia. In Missley and Manningtree alone, the spectral presence of Matthew Hopkins has been sighted in no less than 12 locations. Can the most haunted team uncover the ghoulish mysteries behind the witch trials of East Anglia? Well, uh, this is a totally live programme. We have no idea what's going to happen. Now, already tonight, there appears to be something that may be described as paranormal activity. Just as we went on air, this is what happened to Yvette and Derek. I can show you now. We were recording this earlier with them. They were just waiting. F and that's when the lights failed, which Yvette was talking about. Lights gone off. Shit, shit, shit. Lights gone off. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Whoops. <laughs> OK, we shouldn't have showed that bit. But yes, I, I, apologies at home, of course. This is a totally live show. I was explaining to the audience earlier, this is a totally live show. Let's go over to Yvette and Derek and find out what's going on now. Guys, what's going on? Hi, well, we're here in, in the graveyard at Canoodon St Nicholas's Church. And as you just uh, saw, um, one of the lights went over. Now, if you can actually see here, this, this is the light that went down. Now, there's no wind here, and I think everybody... We've even got some journalists here as well that can verify. It's not windy, is it, guys? Oh, no. it's, it's not at all. Now, this is quite a heavy, a heavy light, OK? And I don't even know how it goes back up, but it really has come down. You have to actually twist. I don't even know how it goes back up at all. It's just really weird. Derek, do you, do you, mm. I mean, what do you think? Well, I mean, we all heard it with our uh, the naked ear, and it was a real uh, hey, look, sharp you've sound. Got to twist. You yeah. have to twist it. That's really strange. You mm. have to twist that. Absolutely. So do you think do you think there's any activity here at the moment? Well, I, I was picking up activity before that started. You were? Yes. And then we heard just afterwards the railings go by the Should gate. Should we go to the railings by the yeah. gate and see if there's anything there? I feel there is activity here. And, you know, it's not just residual energy, uh, which I'm excited about. And I hope, you know, things are going to um, start to happen. If anything comes out at us now, I'm going to absolutely wet myself. You're going to be OK, if you, I promise you, really. Now, you know, wait a minute. Be... What was the... Who heard the noises? Because I... What was it? Because it doesn't move. No. What was it? What was the sort of noise? Was it like that? It was a, more a, wooden. More wooden. Yeah. What like? I can't get my arm in. Can you move that? It doesn't move. No. It doesn't even move. It doesn't make a noise. What about that, that metal on the wood there? Oh, this bit here. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's the noise. Sounds like it. Yeah. Is that what you heard? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Did anybody Directly else hear it? Did anybody else hear that? Well, I, I heard it. Carl heard it. I Any heard of it. our journalists hear anything like that? No, because you were way over there, no, weren't you? Over. Well, that's odd. Mm. What do you make to that? Well, I, I just feel that um, since we um, uh, first came here, is that I, I was picking up just a little bit of residual, but it suddenly changed the atmosphere. So I feel that there is movement that's going round the graveyard now, and I feel actually um, there's two individuals, although I'm not seeing them, most definitely females, most definitely women. Um, and I, I was aware psychically when we had the first with that light. What came here into the psychic side of my thoughts was uh, a woman's uh, uh, anticipation maybe of uh, trying to do something. And suddenly, after that thought, bang goes the light, then here. I mean, I am right in saying that you have to literally turn the handle Mm. to make it bend like that and the fact that it's it's almost as if somebody's come over and just kicked yeah. it well the spirit people can move things can make noises they can do uh, so many things rather quickly uh, whether it be a weighty object or a, an awkward looking object 
if they will it and wish it, they can move those happen. objects. I was talking, funnily enough, to a, a couple of people that came up here, and they actually did a paranormal investigation themselves, mm -hmm. and they said that they experienced, in a short space of time, mm -hmm. a lot of movement, also mm -hmm. noises and screeching yeah. um, uh, that, it, that had happened in this area. And, he, and when you hear it, you think, oh, yeah, right. But mm -hmm. that, to me, is fascinating already mm -hmm. in such a short space of time. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, David, what else is going to happen? We've only been here for five minutes. Well, welcome back to Most Haunted Life for night two of our investigation into witchcraft and sorcery in East Anglia. It's a story of violence, a story of persecution where hundreds of people were put to their death. Now, our next location is Seafield Bay. It's a part of Manningtree where ghosts have been seen, where screams of people have been heard at night. But what is going on there? Here is the story of Seafield Bay. The shoreline of Seafield Bay near Manningtree is the site of alleged screams which drift across the river. These disembodied voices named Matthew Hopkins as their interrogator. One of Hopkins' first victims was Elizabeth Clark, an old one-legged hag. Following imprisonment and torture, Clark eventually confessed to being a witch and having a group of familiars or demons whom she would summon. She also implicated other witches as her accomplices. And of the 29 tried in Chelmsford, 18 were hanged in Manningtree. Apparently the ghost of Elizabeth Clark sometimes appears wandering the water's edge, but will she show herself to the Most Haunted Live team? Okay, well we're here, we're in Seafield. You are joking me. Have we just lost the light? Go off. Are you having a laugh? No, it's, it's gone. gone. We've lost oh. the light again. This happens to We've lost the radio mic. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We're losing all power. You can hear us. Yes. Okay. We can't see where on earth we're going. We're surrounded by um, quicksand on either side. We're going to head up further, further up the beach because we know there's a safer place to cross. Now, Derek, are you actually um, are you picking up upon anything at all? Well, very little at the moment, oh. Vivi. Um, but you know. There is something, I can't quite make it out. Um, and it seem, seems to be coming from that direction, hitting me across my shoulders and, and bypassing my head. And I, I've never come across this before. What do you mean it's hitting you? What do you mean it's Well, feeling, it's, it, it's residual energy in, en masse. It's not what, just like an individual. When you say residual energy, what do you yes. mean by that? Okay. What, is, what are you actually feeling? What I'm feeling is picking up um, energies, okay, right. that have been left behind of experiences by um, human beings, by individuals. Okay. And it's coming at me. I've never, Matthew, I've never experienced this en masse ever in my mediumship. Well, what sort of feelings are they? That uh, of great despair, uh, of great, um, uh, there's a, a blend of anger, there's a blend of not understanding, there's a blend of screaming and shouting. The, oh, it's a mixture I've never had together collectively ever. And here we are on a beach. What do you think that could be, then? You see, for some reason, rather than going in that direction, because it comes this way, as we go, f you know, if we went in this direction, how we far, don't. I don't know, it could get stronger. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, 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 hey. hey, hold on. OK, just stay there, because we're... OK, right. are we sinking? Okay. Are we going? <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hang on, hang on, hang get on. Get on. on. Okay, get oh, in uh, <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Uh, watch your legs. Uh, get the... Here you go. Uh, oh. oh, she's out of her wellies. Uh, okay, careful. What a... Are you all right, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, don't put it down. No, no, it won't. Ah, look. Okay. Hold on. You got it. Yeah. Watch out. She's in the boat. Shit. Get that radio. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Okay. I thought that bit was safe. Ross. We've lost oh. power again. Are we still on air? <laughs> Are we still on air? I'm not sure. I can't hear anything. I'm sitting in a boat. <laughs> Are you all right? Is everybody okay? 
I think we're actually stuck. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we are under. Right, I can't yeah. hear anything at all. You're okay. I'm sitting, oh, we've got the wellies back. That's all right, right then. Right, so okay. we can't go that way. No. <laughs> obviously. Uh, that must be one of the funniest things uh, I've ever, ever experienced in my life. Um, <laughs> 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 all right. So we can't go that way, Derek. We'll just have to no. stay exactly where we are. Okay. I thought that bit was safe. Yeah. Never mind. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You all right? You. Yeah. Okay, we can yeah. go carry on yeah. again, I think. Yes. Um, are we still on air? Yeah. Are they still on us? Yeah. They are. Okay. Derek, oh, you're, yes. you're saying then why yes. you want to go in that direction though? Well, because all this <laughs> energy, Matthew, is is like flooding up up this coast, up this way, and uh, although it doesn't actually belong here, I feel as if. Um, this energy is coming because it wants us to be attracted to it. The closer we get to it, I feel, it maybe it's going to be unveiled. I don't know. Well, we can't get to it. What about if we go round up that way and to the left? Can we try yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Don't anybody no, no way to walk across go there. round there. God, can you imagine? No, what, maybe yeah. Do you think people were murdered here? <sighs> I feel this such despair it's got to have something like this this because the, the psychic energy is also um attracting me is this way Psy we can go that way okay oh we're all right now see this is yeah. the bit that i thought we were all right on earth yeah time. yeah this is better, oh, so, is this better? so again is this are you, yes. are you getting stronger energies what does it um, feel like i'll what tell you feel like to well you? What, what it feels like to me um it's as if i've got this miserable um feeling what is it this miserable feeling of hopelessness and um you know it seems as if it oh where it is it's the pictures now this way this way up this way okay yeah it feel it feels to me that it's a mixture of both males and females and um they see it and it's coming from all of that direction and it's like as if they are uh, the, <coughs> the, the the waiting and you know, the next minute, uh, they're taken, and before they know it, bang, they're in the water under the water, and, you know, they're choking for the, for the, uh, the breath and the bubbles and the sounds, and then they come out, and they're screaming and shouting, and down again they are. And it's just, it's, it's, it's absolutely um, a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling. So who did this? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that had lost the, their lives because of... Um, there's a couple of men. There's a couple of men. Who's that, Sam? Is he responsible? Can you give me a name, then? He's what? Not this Matthew. OK, Matthew. Matthew's um, cohort. OK, Matthew's cohort. Who is it? <laughs> He's responsible. He's one of them that's responsible. Yeah. Okay. He's the killer. Is he the killer? In the water. Put the... Thank you. Yes. John? John, yeah. Thank you, Sam. John? John who? You give me... Please, hold on. If he's sorry, Sam. Sorry, Dan. John? Come on, Sam, you have to give it to me, don't you? So, are you, are you actually hearing, are you hearing Sam? Does Sam... Sam just give Sam's me John. Fine. He's, okay. ju he's just giving me John. John. So why would Sam not be able to give you any other name other than John? I don't know, because, you see, what... This line that I've got right. is what we call, um, we have the clarity, and then we have the, the energy dispersing. <laughs> So I've got to wait on. All I'm doing is listening in. So basically, it's not. I'm not saying that Sam is not trying to give me the full name, but it's like um, he's. It's like use part of the okay. energy. It's quite difficult to get uh -huh. that voice link through. Um, Matt, he's Matt. He, he cohorted with Matthew Hopkins for a period of time, and he. Um, he what? He come away from Hopkins. He come away from Hopkins, but he was resp was he responsible? He was responsible for putting a number of these poor wretched souls uh, into the water and drowning these souls. Did he do it by hand? 
I feel Did like he do it? No, he didn't. He was the one who was responsible to get uh, others to do this. Can you get and me it's up any here. dates? Come on. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sam. The high... The what? Is that how I say it? The highest incidence. Okay. Okay. It was between six, 1642 and 1643, and and he, he, he goes to 644. So I, would that be over a four-year period, Sam? Okay, thank you. And for definite, up there, up there is where a lot of souls lost their lives. They were accused, they were uh, so callously um, killed, they left their physical body uh, and accused of witchcraft. Okay. Because witchcraft, uh, the sounds and whatever you, are up this coast all the time. And you know, honestly, Ivy, I, we see a lot of fishing boats here. Yeah. And I know for a fact, um, in the evening time and whatever, when this residual energy is unleashed and it comes up the coast, there would be most definitely men who maybe were fishing would, would see um, aspects moving about. In fact, I would say they would think at times that there was other people, um, like fishermen and whatever, they go over and shout over to them and there was nothing there. What about noises? What sort Audibles, of noises? Audible, there would be screaming noises. There would also be... Um, uh, you know, also, that would be up the, up this way. There would be... Um, uh, it's wet, I know, but, you know, like horses' hooves? Yeah. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. That comes up here and hits me as well. I've never experienced this level of residual energy ever before. Why would there be horses' hooves on, on a beach, on, on a bay? I don't understand that. I, I don't understand it myself. I feel that possibly the horses um, would be used um, to bring um, these poor wretched souls in like a, uh, a carriage type thing, open carriage, and, and bring them up. Um, Can you get into the names of the, of the, the women you're saying you think? I'll ask, the I'll ask. Yeah. Go on then, please. Who? Are you sure, Sam? He's, yeah, give me the first name. Anne? Go on, please get the second for me, please. Bless. He keeps on saying Anne. Is that how you pronounce it? Anne Leach. Anne, Anne Leach. She yeah. died here. Uh, who else? He's given me Rebecca. Give me the second name. West. Rebecca okay. West. Come on then. There's many, many more. What date? What date was this around when people were murdered here? Again, you see, I, I feel what he's trying to give me it in the period of um, 1642, 1643, 1644. So did these, were these women all killed at the same time? Or did it get the impression these are all separate incidents? Uh, they were separate incidents, but they all were, um, uh, well, executed up there, without a doubt. And their so, sorry, sorrowful screams, um, the last mm. moment and what have you, comes at times. Now, this residual energy unleashes itself uh, at certain times, and it'll come right up the speech like I've just been here with it now, <laughs> and then it will settle. What about certain areas? Where, where would this have happened? Would it have been in a specific area on the bay? Now, so far tonight, Derek Acora has come up with three names. A John, we don't know who John is. Anne Leach, Rebecca West, we don't know who they are yet. Richard Felix, I want to ask you, first of all, John and this idea of... And, and John was responsible for putting them in water. What does that mean? Well, obviously, jo John is going to be John Stern, which, of course, this book's written by him in 1648. He was one of his accomplices. Who's? Uh, Matthew Hopkins' accomplices. And the amazing thing is that what they used to do to test for a witch, they would swim them, throw them into the water, tied to rope. If they sank, they were innocent. If they floated, they were guilty, and they hanged them. Wrong the other way around. Innocent if they sank. If they floated, they were guilty, took them out and hanged them. And that they was called the swimming test. Swimming, yes. And so John Stern worked with Matthew Hopkins. Worked with him all the time for about 18 months, yeah, and actually wrote a book on his, um, uh, well, what he'd done. 
okay, all the people brilliant. he killed and And how else easy would that have man. been playing devil's advocate for Derek to have looked up? Yeah, you could find that on the internet quite Fine. easily. Okay. Uh, Richard Jones, these two names, Anne Leach, Rebecca West, any clues? Yes, uh, Anne Leach was uh, executed for witchcraft in 1645. She was of... Uh, she was actually of Missley, and Rebecca West, interesting enough, was of Lawford, and she was executed in 1645 of village. where we are now. Yeah. And this is actually her confession. This is the confession she made before being executed at Chelmsford. So, uh, yeah. Yes, OK, let's go back to uh, Yvette and Derek, uh, find out what they're doing now. OK. OK, well, we're here. We've come to a safer part of the beach. We're up on a grassy area, away from all the mud and everything. Mm. And we're sort of heading towards this way, which is where, you, Derek, you were saying that you were picking up on uh, a lot of the energy. Yes, Do you want absolutely. to walk slowly that, that way? Because you were saying mm. it's one specific area where yes. a lot of these people mm -hmm. were murdered. I, I feel as we go further up this um, coast here, uh, it's going to get stronger. All right, well, let's walk yeah. slowly. Okay. Slowly. We don't okay. want to be falling or anything like that. Okay. Well, I certainly don't want to be falling. Yeah. OK. OK. <coughs> OK. Nice and slowly. Mm -hmm. Right. OK. You see, we are heading in the right direction because as I'm coming along here, it's just like on the psychic um, uh, side of things, it's like pulling some ice. So what's that behind your, your legs there, Carl? Be careful, um, be careful, Like guys. a solar plexus. It's just dragging it's on me, which is always a pointer that... Um, and it's always a point of where death, um, physical life is being taken. And, um, you know, in a very, very nasty, violent way. OK. Just go slowly now, because there's this board on the floor, there, Carl. It's a board, yeah, Darren, <laughs> yes. be careful. OK? You all right? Yeah. OK. Also, oh, my God. OK. All right. So, Derek, yes. are you feeling anything stronger now? We've walked up in the direction you, you said you were feeling as though the energy yes. was coming from that direction. Yes. Does it feel different? Does it feel stronger here? It, it does, but you see, as we're going along now, I don't know how far... Because uh, I, I can't measure, no, uh, on, on psychic measures or spiritual, how far it is up this coast. I mean, it could be as much as maybe half a mile. It could be just a matter of um, an aspect of maybe, I don't know, 100, 200 yards. But what has become stronger is that these people, these individuals, it was all linked in with an accusation, I feel, of witchcraft, okay. without a doubt. Um, and they were judged in their own right. But the, the, the badness about it is what also is a telltale thing from residual energy. You can normally tell guilt from innocence. And along this because of the, the, the wailing and the, and the screaming and the shouting and the gasp of breath is, you know, which is so sorrowful to me, is the, these people were mostly innocent, mm. mostly innocent. And that's the, the great sadness of it. So this beach is a very sad beach, a very, a very uh, heartbroken beach. Mm. Um, it's like the spine of spirit has been broken. Are there any grounded spirits here, maybe innocent spirits, that, that, that come here? In, or is it just in visitation and you're picking up on the residual energy, as you said before? Um, it, it's mostly the residual and the memory and the energies left behind. However, uh, as you've asked that question, Ivy, I feel there is um, a female uh, aspect, a female a lady um, who would have found herself um, being, can I use just basic words, mm -hmm. dunked in water until actual drowning. And I don't feel that she's truly um, gone um, to the higher side of life. I feel she would... She's um, still here. Probably yes. possibly making the screeching noises. Yes. Matthew, what, what do you sort of make to all this? What's because Derek I... actually has come out with quite a few names and dates, and it's quite interesting. Okay, I think the names and the dates, uh, to my mind, in terms of kind of something evidential, is more interesting than... Uh, saying, OK, obviously, if we're feeling as though this is... Some th things have happened here that may be to do with kind of the witch hunts, then, of course, it's going to be sadness, tragedy, that kind of thing. Mm. So, in terms mm. of evidence, that doesn't impress me. Mm. Is there anything else that you can kind of pick up on? Mm. Any more kind of information that you might think, or Sam might think, could be useful in terms of providing evidence to say, OK, this now couldn't be just read in a book. This isn't right. just Derek kind coming, of just maybe asking going Sam, yeah, to maybe link with, with someone? Okay. They've got to do that, and that individual has got to do that. You can't thing. actually okay. force no, that. No, because we, they've got to come to us. We, we can't command or demand them. Um, it's like, okay, the, the, the women's names you came up with before then, the, yes. any more information about those people that we could... Okay. You know, perhaps um, the folks back in the studio can start looking at more information to see if that, if that you know, confirms what we do know about them or what they could okay. find out. Okay. Um, 
Sam also gives me something else here. Um, I get, but he's placed that, he's not talked to me on this. He's placed in front of me, I'm getting this psychically, um, the surname Clark as well. Clark. Clark. So she would have uh, lost her physical life up this way as well. What about uh, men? Because you're picking up on a lot of yes. women and you are. Well, you have said men and women. Yes. What about any men's names that you can come up Sam, with? Sam, can you help me with this, please? Come on, I'm counting on you. Dunn. Dunn. Yeah. Richard Dunn. Richard Dunn. Richard okay. Dunn. Okay. D U double N. All right. Who? You know, this isn't that so sad. There was young, there was a couple of young males, young, not men. How young old? Young males. Because the, okay, say it again. There was two young males that were belonging to, were the children of, there's two West, there's Rebecca West, and there's another West. I feel that's, two sisters and I feel the thank you Sam uh, one son belonged or is it's two sons two sons that lost their lives because uh, their mother love was um, was uh, uh, was accused of witchcraft sorrowful thing if a person passes over through natural terms and because a person has some kind of contact with that person and they can't understand how the de death took place. Then they go and blame West, one of these West women, for the death of a person. So that person's a witch. Okay. How ludicrous. How sad. Well, I wonder if, if, if what you're saying now, uh, you know, um, the two Richards uh, with the history can actually pick up on, on any of that and maybe verify some of that information, David. Thank you very much I indeed, Yvette. Of course, we're on, on the trail of witches and sorcery. Um, I have to tell you that it's not a historical phenomenon because we're joined by Imbal. Uh, you are a witch. I am indeed a witch. What is a witch? A witch is um, a woman or a man, male witch is still witch, that um, follows the path of witchcraft, the path of the wise. The word wise, the word witch is the same thing, craft of the wise. And nowadays it has to do with revering nature, with seeing a lot of equality, balancing the elements within you, um, seeing the gods and the goddesses as male and female, having lots of like, different pantheons and not focusing on just sort of one male deity. And so, but are you evil? <laughs> well, not you, I don't mean you particularly, but... but are you asking? Yeah, are, are witches evil? Because, you know, essentially they were being tried and persecuted for being evil people. There's um, two things here. First of all, most of the women that were tried and persecuted were not actually witches. They were the weird woman of the village. They were um, the one-legged mad spinster. Yes, the garrulous hag. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Now we're not so much hags. There's, you know, quite a few fag hags, but that doesn't really count. So that's one <laughs> right. thing. The other thing is that it's a bit of a nonsensical thing to sort of even say white witch. Because witch and wise is the same kind of word, then if you were evil, you wouldn't really be very wise, would you? Because we believe that everything we put out comes back to us. That's the law of threefold return. You put out good, you get good three times as much. You put out bad, you get bad three times as much. Now, what would a wise person do? OK, we'll come back to you later on Thank in the show. Um, just let me ask very quickly, Richard Jones, um, witchcraft now, 1735, there was an act, wasn't there, that it's no longer illegal to practice witchcraft? Well, the, the, 17, the 1735 36 Witchcraft Act actually said that uh, it, it removed the death penalty for conjuring up spirits and said pretending to speak with the dead. So that changed the onus uh, very much. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, OK, come with me now. We, let's go and see what's going on in Interactive. Right, Julian, what's going on? Well, busy, busy on this. Um, Steph and Lisa from Derby have just texted to say they heard screaming on the S3 webcam during the last break. Uh, Chris and Natalie from Tregar, Catherine from Exmouth, Chow from Tamworth, all seen a tall white figure of a woman standing and staring at the camera and then immediately disappearing. And Hannah and David from County Durham saw a white flickering shape in the bottom right-hand corner of the webcam. It vanished before appearing in the middle of the screen and then vanished again. Wow, quite, anything else? Quite extraordinary. And a number of view viewers have heard mumbling voices on the jetty cam, deep breathing, and they saw a large dark figure moving along the jetty at about half past nine. Now, Matthew Smith has rejoined us here in the Interactive Hub in Lawford, but 
Richard Felix has gone to take his place because I felt uh, it was get they were getting a little comfortable over there. So he's gone out there uh, to take the place. Now, Manning Tree uh, is very, very near where we are here in Lawford. So what is going on tonight is happening literally under our noses, and we are live tonight. The next location is Manning Tree Green. This is where witches were hanged, and this is its gruesome past. It is in Manningtree where the notorious witchfinder general of the 17th century began his career by condemning a coven of witches who he claimed had sent a bear to destroy him. This small, innocent village green was once the site of numerous hangings ordered by Matthew Hopkins during his 18-month cull of the East Anglian population. Recently, road workers at Manningtree Green discovered a stump beneath the ground which is thought to be the remains of the gibbet where the witches once swung. Are the ghostly figures seen gathering on this grassy verge, the victims of Hopkins, waiting to take their revenge? OK, well, we're here at Manning Tree Green. Yes. Now, it, it's a small um, area, and also there are, there are residential houses behind us. Um, are you picking anything up straight away, or do you need a little bit more time? Well, when we first uh, actually come away from the, the vehicles and we got out, um, again, not in a similar fashion, but what happened uh, in the pre previous location, mm. this feeling of total despair, mm -hmm. feeling of, uh, you know, uh, like my mind was saying, oh, I'm, this is the end for me, this is the end for me. So I, I, I do feel that this is a, an area uh, of uh, death and uh, feelings of uh, total despair. What kind of death? How, how, how were their lives ended? Well, I feel that these um, souls would have, um, in a different manner to what I was experiencing down there, with, you know, death through water and what have you, uh, I feel uh, for definite that these souls would have uh, lost their lives by being strung up. Right, so they were hanged they here? They were hanged. Okay. And, uh, and, and I feel quite a number of them. How many? Well, as you asked that question, what came to mind, I may be wrong with this, but a figure of whether that figure was in a short period of time or whether that was the whole, I don't mm -hmm. know. But when you asked that question, I saw the figure six, mm -hmm. eight. 68. 68. 68 people were hanged here. I feel so, yeah. OK. And Richard Felix is, is here. Hi, Richard. Hello. Are you mic'd up? I am mic'd up okay. indeed. Yes, I and am. Do we know of how many people were actually hanged in this specific area? We've reports definitely of four. Witches Four. That are definitely hanged here, but there's reports of lots of others. Um, certainly 18, something like that, possibly even more. And it would have been here okay. on this spot. There's no doubt about it. But we have four definite recorded hangings here at Manning Tree Green. All right. Is there any way of you maybe sort of linking in and, and finding out who the four four people were? Well, all I can do is try. Um, uh, come on, Sam. Now, unless Sam gives it to me voice-wise, it may be given to me imagery. Now, what has been placed here in front of me, now, I'm only getting a first name as such, but I get the name Elizabeth. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's one. Is it? Yeah, yes. in front of me, please. Bless you. He's only giving me that one. Come on, Sam. Is Clark? Clark. Elizabeth Clark, or is Elizabeth, that... Elizabeth Clark was, was Matthew Hopkins' first victim. Don't say a date. Can, can, can you get Sam to maybe give a can date more, for when please? she died? Come on, Sam, put it in the plane in front for me. Come on, try a bit harder. One, six, sixteen. Looks like 4, 5, 16, 4, 16, 45. Is that right? Yeah, she was his first victim. And she was hanged in 1645. 16, yeah, OK. Well, could, could you...? Oh, What's take that off, take it off. What's the matter? Take this, oh, sorry, Ev, sorry. OK, what does that mean? What does that mean? 
What does it mean? What you've just done to me? Okay. This poor soul had a leg off. A, um, off her leg. Who took the leg off? Who took the leg off, Sam? Did they do that to her? No. No. They hung her. She had um, a... Um, what was that then? It's like a stick or a stump. So she, a leg was off. Can you be... I feel this also, this soul, this energy that's coming around me now, that's got to be her. Maybe she's in is she response. Close? Is she close? I feel she is. Can you get a voice link with that's her? That's why I got that. Try, well, try and see if you can get a voice link She's an old soul. She's not a young How woman. Old? I don't feel she's young. The impressions are any, she's... It's like... Is she behind you? You keep... I feel the energy, yeah, it comes pumping forward and going back. But I... I oh, look at that. Now I'm seeing some... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. OK. Tell me what you're seeing. I'm seeing all... She's... Allow me to see this. All kinds of... Um, these marks that I picked up earlier on, that I was being shown, where she'd been... Oh, the needles. God, all over. Yeah. And, look, what? What does that mean? They, what? They... They could not find the place... Yes. The Mary, she couldn't find the place where of the devil's mark so she said she said she said to him it's got to be where the leg was so we've got no way of knowing it's to do with the leg and she screamed she screamed in pain and agony and she screamed at that big fat wench she screamed at her, leave me alone, leave me alone, what are you doing? How old was she when she died? The feelings I get with this uh, energy, this lady... Maybe she... Maybe she's... Her impressions are older than what she was, but I would say... The feelings I get, she had to be, I don't know... It could be anything from in her 60s... Going, you know... Aya and um, oh, the poor wretched soul. Look what they did with her. They took her thumbs. You got her thumbs? Mm. Yeah. And it. What are they doing? What are they doing? They're just putting her onto that table. And they, they sat her back. And she's tired her thumbs. And she's screaming. Goodies with her. Goodies with her. Right. Goodies with her. You mentioned her, didn't you? Goodies with her, yes. Oh. What's happened to her? What's happened to Goody? She hates her. Yeah. She still to this present day hates her. She was one of the searchers, Mary Goody oh, was she? Phillips. And she was one of Matthew Hopkins' accomplices. Right. That Derek used to mentioned do the, the pricking. Name. Right. Yes. Oh, he mentioned her last night as well. You're right. He mentioned Mary. You're yes. right, Derek. Yes. Yeah, I'm just I just want to get those. Come on. <clears throat> Can you sense water, Derek, or anything like that with this business of the thumbs being tied? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Yes. What they used to do was tie the thumbs to the to their big toes. Yes. And then put ropes around the waist and throw them in the water <sighs> to swim them. This is what I think is happening now to Derek. You all right, Derek? Yes, OK. Yeah. I'm all right. Do you need to take yeah. it off? I've got it, yeah. Do you take, take, take it off? Take it off, yeah. no, so. So they did this to her? They did this thumb thing to her? Yes, yeah. OK. But she was hanged? Yes. Poor soul. She was so... She was so... She couldn't understand. She couldn't understand why they came for her. What had she done? She'd done nothing. Mm. She'd done nothing. She, she, she was not um, in any way strongly linked with witchcraft. 
she wouldn't have to have been, Derek, because so many of these poor women, um, nothing wrong with them at all, other than no. the fact that they were strange, old, toothless, mm. she was legless, or she got one leg missing, mm. and, and that was enough for someone to point the finger, the fickle finger of fate, mm. at yeah. her. So and, sad. Uh, well, we'll, we'll stay here for a little bit. Uh, join us after the break. We've, all, we've already got uh, so much information here, which is it, awful. But please, please join us after the break, and hopefully we can pick up some more and maybe uh, get to the bottom of, of more of these awful, awful deaths. See you in a moment. Welcome back to Most Haunted Life. Thank you for all your calls, texts and emails. Now, Max from Chelmsford was sitting, minding his own business on the sofa, eating an Easter egg when his television turned itself on miraculously onto Most Haunted Live. Is that paranormal? Ross from, Le Ooh. Ross from Leeds found out today uh, that his great-great-great-great-auntie, uh, Joe King, was trialled as a witch in the 1650s and found guilty. Thank you for that as well. Now, this is a live show. There is no script to this. We go with what exactly is happening. Now, in the break, Derek felt uh, a very, very strong inclination to go back to one of the locations that we'd already visited. Now, do you remember earlier on today, we sent the team to the Thorn Hotel, and we showed you what happened earlier, but Derek has been drawn back to this hotel, so who are we to argue with that? We have sent them back to the Thorn Hotel. Let's remind ourselves of the story of the Thorn Hotel. <laughs> Situated in the town of Misley, the Thorn Hotel has undergone massive refurbishment, but its tormented history is a reoccurring nightmare for the landlords past and present. As with many other inns in the area, it is here where Hopkins held local trials, but here he also took a room that he used as his central office. Outside in the stables, where he is believed to have interrogated and tortured alleged witches, a youngster was pushed under a horse and trampled to death. Is he the ghostly child seen playing in the gardens? And what are the identities of the grey lady and hooded figure seen haunting the Thorn Hotel? OK, well, we're back here um, in the Thorn uh, restaurant uh, and hotel, and it's it, it already um, it, it's really peculiar. Um, my um, microphone... Um, went a little bit funny and Darren just explain what's happened while we've been here very quickly. So your radio mic for some reason wasn't transmitting and I don't know why and all of a sudden it just came right again. Okay. Just white noise. Just white noise yeah. on, on my microphone which is nice to know. Um, also we, we were in here Getting, getting warm. Derek, as you'll notice, is, is not here with me at the moment because he felt um, very sick. Um, he didn't feel right and he said there was an evil presence here in, in the place that Richard and I are standing and, and the Most Haunted Live crew. Um, he doesn't feel right. He was about to join us. Um, oh, he's, he's here. Are you all right? Yes. Come on then. I was just about to say, you have to keep going. For the, you look dreadful. Just a little bit uh, right? sick. Yeah, I'm okay now. Yes, yeah. fine. So what were you, just explain to us what you've been picking up yes. here. I, I become very aware uh, when I walk through the restaurant, all of a sudden, of a spirit presence at the back of me, and very wide at the back of me, then rushing forward and tried to link in here and really just putting the pressure on. I felt his essence. I know what he's about. Um, to me, he's evil. Who is he? Um, I'll ask, I'll ask. Sam? You'll have to come in there. Don't let him in yet, Sam. Don't. OK, let's establish who he is. Do we allow him? Do we allow him? Is that all he wants to do? I don't trust him. I don't trust... No, Sam. OK, part the way. Only part the way. What? What? Is that what he's saying? Mills. 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 Is that his name? Mills. Mills, he keeps on saying. Mills. Is that the name? It's the name. Okay. Is that his surname? Is that his surname? Is it? It's his surname, maybe. Okay. Why is he here? Why is he here? Because he wants to be here, Sam says. He wants to be here. Why? Did he live here? Did he live here, Sam? 
He used to come here. He used to come here. He used to be invited here. By who? By who? By Matthew. By Matthew. Mm -hmm. He's a bad one, this. I'm not... He's a bad one. Is he here now? Yes, he is. How He's close, listening to us. Is he? Where is He's he? very he close by. Him? His energy's here. Should we go forward? Yes, OK. Mm -hmm. OK, be careful now as we... What was his name again, Derek? What's his name? It's Sam. Mills. 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 Come over this way, Evie, because I don't feel that energy there. What energy were? Yeah, close by there. Because he was there earlier on, trying to, and he come forward, tried to press into my shoulders. There's no temperature drop. OK, look, that, look, that does not really matter, Evie, but I'll tell you why. It's because this one is masking himself. He wasn't shown himself or even given anything at all of energy this afternoon. And I know, through the energy, what I was picking up before, that this just for just... This is not evil, but uh, I, in my mind, it was like a play playthrough here, as if uh, he wouldn't think twice, this soul, to... Even if people, bless, were actually sitting here and what. I'm not saying that he's done that, but I feel that um, he likes to alarm people, frighten people. And the easiest, what I've got in my mind's eye, is that he's picking up, like, cutlery, and he's picking up um, things from the tables, you know, and, well, and flinging them. I can actually say, because we were talking to the owner of, of the property, and she actually said that not that long ago, um, a coffee cup, I'll just use this as an example, a coffee cup actually came off here, slid across here, yes. and flew and hit somebody over yeah, here, yes. into this corner here. Yeah, well, this is him. And a, a, one of the mirrors behind the bar shattered for yes. no reason. Yes, this is him. Right. Yes. OK. How close can you let him come? Oh. Can we talk to him, Derek? Francis! Francis! You're Francis, are you? You're Francis? Hmm? Francis. Francis. What's your surname, Francis? <laughs> What's your surname? What's your surname? What's your surname? I do not. I do not have to talk to you. I want you to tell me what your surname is. Come on. You hussy. Oh, am I? You don't scare me. You hussy. Am I? I don't think so. You hussy. No, I'm not. You so tell hussy. me. You don't scare me one bit. You no, you don't scare me. Don't come near me because you don't scare me. Yeah. So tell me, tell me, what's your surname? <laughs> hmm? What's your surname? <laughs> Come on, what's your surname? What's your surname? What's your surname? Take thy hand off me, wench! No, I'm not. I'm just asking for your surname. Take thy hand off me, wench. No, you don't scare me. Come on, what's your surname? I'll scuttle your legs. Oh, will you now? Mm. Don't you like women? See your breasts. Yeah, don't you like women? Wench. You don't like women, do you? You see your breasts. Yes, I do, yeah. Hmm?
Okay, well, if you can, if you can still see. Oh! Oh! oh. That is. Um... Are we still on air? Okay, we're still on air. What's happened? What's, what's happened is, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I'm just going to keep. What's, hap what's happened is, is that um, Derek sometimes gets um, possessed. Uh, this can happen quite a lot. This has been happening quite frequently. Um, and what we have to do is, tr is try as hard as we can to try and get as much information out um, because he's, 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 he's been taken over by a supposed spirit. It takes a while and then what happens is, is that, that we manage to calm him down and then he comes round. In most cases he can't really remember what has happened. Um, a lot of people find it quite frightening um, to experience this. I mean, I'm, I'm quite shaky, um, but I'm used to it. Um, some of the members of the Most Haunted Live crew and uh, Most Haunted crew are used to it. It is happening a lot more, which in a way is, is a good thing because we're managing to get a lot more information out, but others will see it as quite distressing. But Derek has supposedly his spirit guide, he has got protection, and he will be fine. So, David... Please assure everybody in the audience, and I do assure everybody at home, that Derek will be fine. He's absolutely fine. Give it 10, 15 minutes and he'll be okay. I will. Yvette, can you, you can hear me loud and clear, yeah? Um, kind of, yeah. yeah you have I, to talk quite loudly. Well, I, I have to say, I, I find that deeply distressing, and I know that, um, in fact, at Stratford, um, you know that I saw this happen firsthand after the show. Do you remember this? Yeah. Um, and I have to say, yes, it, I do, it, yeah. it, it is absolutely terrifying. Um, and, and even as an open-minded cynic, I have to say, it is absolutely overwhelming. Um, and if, in fact, when, when it happened, uh, Derek had to be restrained by two men uh, for a long period of time. Um, and that's the first time I've seen it uh, like that. Uh, when in Stratford, he was absolutely fine after he'd rested. I'm sure that will be the case uh, tonight. Rich, could you ask Richard Felix to go and uh, aid Derek? Um. Yeah, Richard, can you, uh, yeah, mm. can you go out the outside and help Derek, if he's that's gone. what, he's yeah, gone. oh, he's, he's, he's actually, he's, he's, he's actually, no, he's gone, he's, he's actually gone, okay. um, you actually, I don't know if you can still hear me, but basically, as, as well, whilst we've been filming, um, the series of Most Haunted, uh, more and more things have been happening to the crew, um, that everybody at home will see, also, Derek, this is becoming quite frequent, where certain members of the crew, um, are, are sort of standing in the way of these supposed, uh, nasty entities, um, it does happen quite frequently, sometimes nothing will happen at all for weeks, and then all of a sudden this will happen quite a lot. Um, and it, it is distressing. Can I but ask I can you, only is there any doubt in your it, it's mind? Be, it's becoming more... Is there any doubt in your mind that... that is there he, any doubt? Yeah, that he makes this up? There, there isn't... As far as I'm concerned, all I'm seeing is exactly what you, what you have experienced, David. You do... It's only human to actually sit there and think, oh, my God, what's happening there? Um, but... Just, you didn't, we didn't get it on film, but what happened was Derek came in, he was sweating, he was feeling sick, he was going to the toilet, he wanted to be sick. And this apparently is quite common with a lot of mediums that, um, you know, do uh, get possessed. And it is quite rare possession, um, I do know that for a fact. Um, but, and it does seem to be happening more and more with Derek. But from what I'm seeing, um, and you yourself are, are a doctor, um, f from, from what you actually see, you, you can't help but stand back and go, oh my God, you know, what is happening? And it is quite... It, it, it's, it's quite incomprehensible sometimes because you can't quite work out what is happening at all. So I, I don't know, I really do not know. But some of the information and some of the language in which he speaks is, is amazing because I think, well, how on earth did you know this word? How did you know that word? How do you know certain dates? Which is very intriguing. It'd be interesting to see what, what Matthew says. Yeah, and as a team, we all get on really well. And there is no doubt in my mind, when it happened, when he was with me, he, he spoke with so much vitriol and hatred to me in the same way he spoke to you tonight there was uh, I was very very frightened yeah it, it wasn't very pleasant at all um, I, as I say I'm sort of getting a little bit more used to it so I can kind of uh, cope with it but for a lot of people who haven't experienced it before yeah. it is very distressing to see and it is quite frightening um, but you know we, you know, Carl and Ray and Richard Felix and myself, um, we all know how to cope with it now and we know how to handle it. Yeah, I ha um, and it doesn't happen that often. I have to say that I think you were very brave to stand up to him tonight. So I think, you know, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for her. <laughs> Well, you are terribly brave because um, 
I know how I reacted in, um, in Stratford. So thank you for the moment, Yvette. I'm going to ask Matthew what he does think uh, um, of tonight's... Well, again, I, obviously we both shot when it suddenly happened. And again, I think... Uh, I wouldn't have been particularly, you know, I'm sure if, you know, with me standing there, he might have been even more uh, uh, violent. But again, it doesn't seem as though, you know, it doesn't appear to be Derek that's there. That's what I mean. No. What is his notion of being were, possessed? Were he does you? act as if he is possessed. But were and you with, with us when, when it happened to me? Um, this was after the, the, show, was in after the show in Stratford. Yeah, Stratford. I mean, I, I was standing, that's what's wrong. And that's what's there, it's interesting, because here, of course, the context is the pressure is on to perform. That's why I thought it was quite interesting early on tonight when they did the, the, the kind of mini seance, is that you know, there was the opportunity there to, if you're going to be acting it, this is where it's going to happen. And with the pressure on, you know, Derek said, honestly, no, I'm not getting anything in here, nothing's happening. So but it's the most take it out of that context. I, I go with that argument, and le but the only thing was, the most convincing thing for me uh, after Stratford was that we had done the programme, we'd done it all, exactly. we were all relaxing, and then it happened. Exactly. And that to me, and actually at the time, he was talking to a spirit that happens to be a member of my family, and he, the, the explanation given to me that was that he was open to communication mm -hmm. and that he was hijacked by an evil spirit who he had encountered that night in Stratford when we were there investigating. And, I, you know, I am telling you that, you know, as a scientist myself, that freaked me, mm -hmm. really did. Well, exactly. I mean, again, the, the kind of argument that, um, you know, acting in his way or being possessed, in inverted commas, on the show, again, that's a different context from doing it at a, essentially, after the show, amongst friends, where there was no kind of need to perform as yeah. such. So that's kind of, can be taken in, 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 in support of the idea that, you know, he wasn't doing it just because the cameras were on. But again, I know, having spoken to Derek at that time after it happened the next morning, you know, these are things now which are concerning him. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, mm -hmm. he, you know, after he says he feels though he's, you know, he, this is this is starting to worry him. So again, there is, I think there are reasons for concern, just really for his kind of his well-being at the very least. Yes, absolutely right. Let's just ask Richard Jones as well. Um, you know, of it, let's just pick up on what, what he did say. Um, he came up with a name. Can you throw any light on the name that he came up with? He came up with the name Francis Mills. Uh, there's a Faith Mills who was a, a victim of the witchcraft hysteria. Uh, the thing to remember about Hopkins and Stern is that they split up in 1645 because they realised it was a lucrative business and that going their separate ways, they could go through the counties. So Hopkins did take on other assistants, so Francis so, Mills might well have been one of those assistants. Crikey. Now, uh, let's have a look uh, again at what happened earlier on because it was really, really startling. And I think when you're trying to look for paranormal evidence, this is pretty good. Let's have a look. I felt his essence. I know what he's about. Um, to me, he's evil. He used to come here. He used to come here. He used to be invited here. He's a bad one, this. I'm not... He's a bad one. Francis! Francis! You're Francis, are you? Name. Take thy hand off me, wench. No, you don't scare me. Come on, what's your surname? Oh, scuttle your legs! Oh, will you now? Mm. Don't you like women? See your breasts? Yeah, don't you like women? Wench! You don't like women, do you? You see your breasts? Yeah. I've also uh, just been hearing uh, disturbing reports that I, I don't know whether these are actually true, that it has happened to um, Derek once again. He's back in the building and has had a similar occurrence with, um, with, again, let's go and join them now. Yvette, what's going on? Yvette, what's going on? Yvette's got no talk back at the moment, but we can't come to us yet. Oh my. Okay, okay. Well, we're here. These we're are here. live we're pictures. Just by, the, by the ruins. We're, um, um, we've just been by the by the ruins here, which is where Matthew Hopkins is, um, as as just was buried. Sorry. And what's happened is is that Derek got um, taken over again, um, and they had to take him out through the gate here. Who by? He's, he's gone off in a car. Um, he's, he's absolutely fine. I've been kicked in the process. <laughs> and uh, it was a bit of a scramble. So what, what we're going to do... Who, who, um, who took him over, Yvette? OK, so, so Derek has gone off in that direction over there. The ruins are over in this direction. We can take a walk if you like. Do you want us to go and have a walk? Yes. Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. we'll go. We don't know where we're going at all. It's uh, really dark. No idea. Now, Richard, I do know for a fact. God, that really hurt. That did. Think it did. No, I'll give you one. He was actually carried off as fireman's okay. lift, you know. I know. Um, now, these are the ruins here. We must be careful. 
And um, Matthew Hopkins is, was buried, or is buried, I should yeah. say. Sorry, I'm a bit shaken by what's just All happened. Right. Yeah, Hang on. fine. <sighs> Can yeah. we get past here? Mind the branches and things. Keep to the left. Do we know whereabouts it is that he's buried? To be honest with you, no, because, um, there are, as you can see, um, there's trees, there's branches. Ow! All right. And um, all we've got are the ruins of, obviously, so it could be any. Church. So it could be anywhere around here that he was buried? Yes, and, of course, as far as we know, there are... Well, I mean, there were very few gravestones in those days anyway. We're talking 1647. Okay. Um, so there weren't many, and as far as we can tell, there are no gravestones. This is a very, very Dark. creepy place. It's not nice at all. Um, let's have a, have a torch. Um, unfortunately, <sighs> I think basically we can say that we're going to leave Derek where he is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to probably make our way back to the hub now. Um, we found this is the area where Matthew Hopkins was actually buried, but we don't actually know the exact place. This is a very, very creepy area. It's not nice at all. Um, so if it's all right with you, David, and everybody back in the hub, we're going to make our way over to you. Is that, is that all right? It's absolutely fine. Um, well, I mean, it, it's a remarkable uh, show. As you know, this is a completely live show, so things are changing. Now, what I can tell you is that we were actually recording at the time of that second incident. I'm just being told that we can show you uh, now the footage that was taken at the time. Let's have a look. Hang on. Oh. Yeah. Right, yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, hang on, we're going to put Bizarre and remarkable scenes. Um, Matthew, what do you make of that? Twice I, in a night. I don't, yeah, I don't know what to make of it. Um, again, you know, if, if interpreting it in terms of, you know, come on, Derek, perform, this is as this is you on, again, that's a time when he wasn't actually being filmed. So, or he was being filmed, but it wasn't, he wasn't on air, as it were. Well, so he didn't know he was being exactly. filmed. Exactly. Yeah. So, isn't it, you know, let's at the very least, it's worrying. Let's ask Yvette. Yvette, what do you make of tonight? Twice in a night. I don't know. I, my honest answer is none of us know. We're all a bit shaken. We, we don't know what to make of it at all. Um, everywhere we're going at the moment, every location we're going to, things are happening. Not just to Derek, and that is very dramatic in itself, but to certain members of the crew. We're all experiencing things. It's becoming more and more, more and more regular. Why that's happening, I don't know. I do remember that Matthew Smith said to me quite a while ago, if you have a group of people and they know each other and they get to know each other, they spend a bit of time doing these investigations, you can create a lot of energy. I'm not saying that's paranormal. All I'm saying is maybe things are being stirred up because it's the same group of people over and over again doing investigations. I mean, is that, is that right? What, what, Richard, what do you make of tonight? Well, uh, similar to what you're saying, I think there's energy. The, the thing that bothers me is that it all seems to centre around you so often. There's so much happening, and it's always when you're here, even down to your battery tonight. Uh, I know Derek's getting possessed more, but it's, it's always when you're here, and it concerns me a lot because it, it's happening more and more. We're seeing things happen to us all the time, and it's quite disturbing, to say the least. Mm. And it's very disturbing for you, I'm sure. Well, I don't know. We say, uh, lots of people would say, oh, you know, you're all getting braver. Every one of us is getting braver. But in fact, <laughs> we're, getting we more frightened. we're getting more frightened and we don't know why. So if anybody has any answers out there in the audience, maybe, that, that are watching and with you in the hub, David. And also, maybe Yvette, could, I want to ask I don't know, you, maybe they've got some advice. Who took, who took him over this time? Was it the same guy as before? Was it this Francis Mills? Did he give you a name? I, d I don't know because I wasn't actually with him at the time. Ooh. Carl, you were, what's the matter? What is it? All right. It's fine. It's all right. Some crew okay. members are getting a bit freaked out. Um, <laughs> Carl was with Derek and Ray was with Derek. Carl, who did Derek say he was getting taken over by? He, he didn't give a name. He just, just uh, stopped breathing, didn't he? He, he was getting strangled. He was getting hung. He was getting hung. He was getting strangled. And according to Sally, he stopped breathing. So, um, but he's apparently he's absolutely fine. He's having, he's having a cigarette and he's fine. <laughs>
Well, thank you for the moment, Yvette. It's been an incredible three-night epic as we've been on the trail of witchcraft and sorcery in East Anglia. We've been following the witch trials, we've been following the witchfinder general Matthew Hopkins, who is believed to be buried in Missley uh, in Essex. Well, it has been an amazing night. I mean, an astounding night, actually. Um, and I know that what's happened tonight has really, really uh, made all of you at home respond in such an amazing way. So let's find out from Julian exactly what you are saying. Julian. Well, it's an extraordinary reaction to this, David. Um, first of all, Jasmine Adams from Hertfordshire says she was taping the show. There was plenty of tape left on the machine, and just before Derek got possessed, their tape recorder stopped recording and switched herself off completely. At the same time, Jules from Paisley heard the names Edward Paisley and Mary Goody being said. Jackie Skinner from Whitley Bay says that she came over very sick and cold at the precise moment that Derek uh, went into his trance. Uh, Lynn Chambers uh, has uh, called on the phone line. She said, I felt very ill and sick. Actually, lots of people ringing saying this when this happened, uh, when Derek was possessed, uh, and very concerned about his health. Is he okay? So that's a, a trend, of course. And, and here's another one. Gillian from Retford in Nottinghamshire says the whole room just turned very, very cold. I checked the radiators. They were boiling hot, but the room felt really cold when that happened to Derek. Uh, Alan from Surrey says Derek should stop. I'm concerned that he may get hurt. Uh, Teresa Jones, though, from South Wales says don't think Derek would do anything to put the team in danger and isn't putting it on, by the way, she says. And uh, a lot of calls about Yvette as well, a lot of support for her. Marie in Cheshire says Yvette has a talent to help Derek and is a magnificent support for Derek and uh, wanted to say that. Another caller saying that as well. Here's another one, Carol and Bournemouth saying the same thing about that. And finally, uh, Margaret Carr from Birmingham reports that Francis Mills, which is the name, of course, that Derek talked about, um, it, there's a historical interest in Hopkins and a connection here. It's actually, from the spelling, a woman, not a, a man. And apparently, uh, Margaret has a copy of the biography of Hopkins. And in 1976, uh, it's a copy. Mistress Mills was well known, and I'm extremely surprised um, that this happened tonight. So I don't know whether the historians have any thoughts on that. Is there a, a Mistress Hopkins rather than a, a Mr. Hopkins? So that's the latest on what Lovely. the callers and texters are saying. Well, thank you very much indeed, Julian. Thank you to all of you for your phone calls, for your texts, and for all your messages uh, wishing Derek well. OK, let's go and uh, find out what our audience here uh, think, because, um, well, let's find out what they say. Now, you, um, I know that you are a paranormal investigator, aren't you? You're yeah. in a group. Yeah. What do you make of what happened to Derek tonight? Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely. I mean, you could tell it wasn't put on. There is no way it was put on. We're actually with BSPRI, which is based in Bristol, and we'd be interested in doing an investigation for that chap. Oh, for the there. gentleman in South yeah, Wales? Okay. Exactly. Let, now, I also know there are cynics here, because I talked to them earlier on. Where are they now? Oh, good, you're not shy. Now, what is your name? Tony. Tony, where are you from? London. London. Now, you told me in the uh, break that yeah. you were a complete cynic. Yeah. Now, since that conversation, two very strange things have happened to Derek. Mm. What do you make of that? Well... Um, I, I've never personally experienced anything paranormal, so sure. I, I, I don't believe in it or, or accept it. Um, with Derek, uh, you know, all I can think there is that it's, it's superb acting. We're coming to the climax of a three-day show, and for me, it's TV, and it's... The, it, oh, the, imag think... the popular imagination that watches this, they all buy into it, and it creates a hysteria that's great for viewing, great for viewing. Why have you bothered to come tonight, then? Because they had a spare ticket. <laughs> it was a spare... <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, it's fair enough. Who would like to contradict what he's just said? Who? Who? Are you all booed? Now you've all gone very quiet. What do you make of it? I think everyone should make their own judgment. Yes. What's yours? Um, I believe Derek. I really do. I think he. A lot of the things he comes up with, you cannot research. Some of the previous ones that we've done, he's come up with some information that even the historians have struggled to get. Um, he obviously believes it, and big, big. Congratulations to Yvette, she's getting a hell of a lot braver. <laughs> she she's certainly got some is. Guts. OK, I want to actually get round to the back of your row. Can I just lean over? Sorry, we'll be very intimate for a moment. Now, you are mother and son, aren't you? Yeah. You are a believer. Yes. But your son isn't, who's sitting next to you. No, he's not. Let's find out what he makes of tonight. Um, I really don't know what to say. It's, um, it's quite bizarre and um, can't really be explained, can it? So... Now, when we spoke in the break, you were adamant that everyone in here was completely <laughs> mad. No, it was me. That you were mad, yes. yes. Uh, um, I don't know, I just don't buy into it myself, um, but I can't explain what just happened, so... Has tonight's happenings made you change your mind, or at least make you think differently? Probably a little bit more open than before, um, but yeah, still not totally convinced. And what about Mum? Totally convinced. Why? 
because I've seen things happen before, and not just in an adult, in a child. So until, I think until you actually see it yourself, nobody is a full believer. Mm. So. And when, when that happened to Derek, when he was taken over, appeared to be taken over, did, did anyone else here in the audience feel strange in any way or have empathy with him? Yes, you did. You felt really sick. sick? Extremely sick, and I had to sort of cover my mouth because I did feel very sick when he got taken over. I do get quite scared when that happens to him for his own safety, but I did feel quite sick to the stomach. And you're a believer? Yes. So tonight for you was very, very real? Yes. yes. Okay. And one, there was, who else said that they felt sick? Did you feel sick? It wasn't that. We, the gentleman over there and me, we've both had on the back of our necks, like somebody's been slapping us on the back of our neck all night. And when he did that, it was like a burning pain down the back of our necks. And the lady behind, right. it was like somebody went smack. OK, thank you very much indeed. Well, it has been a, an extraordinary night. You know, and with this show, um, you never really know <coughs> what's going to happen. Um, so um, it, it really has been an incredible night indeed. It's been a, an amazing journey over the last three nights. But I am very, very pleased to report that two people have worked so hard over the last three nights. They have been around East Anglia, around Essex. They have battled the cold weather. They have braved the elements and, and a lot more besides. So I am absolutely delighted to welcome them here to Lawford in Essex. So ladies and gentlemen, please will you welcome Yvette Fielding and Derek Okora. <laughs> To see you. How are you? Okay. Come and have a seat. Come and have a seat. Come and have a seat. Oh. Right. Okay. <laughs> what on earth went on? Oh. Derek, no, Derek, you tell us first. Everyone here is absolutely gripped. They want to know what's going on. Okay. When we were, uh, came into the restaurant, uh, almost immediately, um, I felt uh, a presence behind me, my shoulders, followed me up the restaurant. I immediately said, Ivy, there's uh, an individual with me, I know it's a male, and he's trying, and at that moment, uh, Carl came on, he said, are you okay, Derek? And this individual's trying to come in, my auric feels from my shoulders, and I said to Sam, Sam, please, keep him back, I don't yeah. like the feeling of him. Let's, you know, when, when that happened to you, let's see exactly what happened to you, watch this, Derek. Okay. I felt his essence, I know what he's about. Um, to me, he's evil. He used to come here. He used to come here. He used to be invited here. He's a bad one, this. I'm not... He's a bad one. Francis! Francis! You're Francis, are you? Yeah, Take thy hand off me, wench. No, you don't scare me. Come on, what's your surname? Oh, scuttle your legs! Now, oh, will you now? Mm. Don't you like women? See your breasts? Yeah, don't you like women? Wench! You don't like women, do you? You see your breasts? <laughs> And that's, watching that back upsets you, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, because, um, well, I didn't know his um, true intentions. And what can I say is that, uh, although I got the reassurance from Sam, um, I have no re recollection whatsoever of those seconds or minutes, how long that was. I, I remember... If that's the right word, coming round in a car. Mm. Yeah. And you came up with the name Francis Mills. Did I come up with that yeah. name? Yeah. yeah, you did. Does that have any relevance at all? Yeah, well, yes. Uh, in fact, Richard Jones was saying. Go on, say. Well, uh, well, that wasn't me who was saying. Kate came in from one of the uh, viewers that there mm. was Francis Mills who was one of his prickers. It was Lady Francis Mills, and she was one of the prickers of Matthew Hopkins. Oh, so, right. yeah. so yeah, so it has to to total relevance. What was it like for you, that? It was, uh, it was frightening because you don't really know what to expect. Mm. I never know what mm. to expect, do mm. I? No, you don't. But no. I have become a, 
sort of a little bit braver when when these things do happen. Absolutely. So and I know how to kind of deal with it a bit more. And, yeah. and because we've got Carl there, we've yeah. got Ray there, we've got the members of the crew that can always help. So yes. and we're getting used to it. This is becoming, mm. as, I, as I said, you know, more of a, a common thing. And I don't know if you heard me say to you about. You mentioned to me that this can happen quite a lot. Well, yeah, I think it also comes back to some of the ideas that David mentioned earlier on the show that when people are spending lots of time together, then if there's some psychological factors that can increase some effects, whether they're paranormal or not, then that may be something that's happening. I'm also interested in asking Derek, if I'm able to, just to say that this has happened before, and you're not able to actually, you're not able to control it at all, there's no way you can stop it. <clears throat> You've got to allow and invite a spirit in I, have to, I have to jump in because I've got to show you, it happened again when we were recording the second time, but you didn't know we were recording, this is what happened. <laughs> So there you go, it happened again. And, and for me, that, that's much better evidence because, you know, we were talking earlier yeah. about the fact, so that, saying the fact that you're not on um, telly. Yeah, I mean, because one thing is, again, the sceptical person might argue that, particularly when on air, as someone in the audience pointed out, you know, end of a, th a, th a three nights of important, the pressure is on for you to perform, because that's kind of, what, kind of what you're here for. But that's, that's the concern when it happens on air. At least there, where you're not feeling, OK, the camera happened to be on, but you weren't on air, it just so happened to be recorded. That, again, suggests that it's something you're not perhaps able to control. And I know when we spoke before, you're becoming increasingly concerned by it, because it seems to be happening more often, and it's something you can't control. Um, to a degree, to can't degree, control. You can, can't you? To a certain to a degree. degree. Yeah, I mean, you, you sort of, we were there at the first location yeah. and you were sort of holding it off for quite a long time and in fact, you went to the toilet and was sick twice. Yeah. Um, and I knew that that was what was happening mm. to you because it's energy. happened before. You know, yeah. really and there's something about your aura actually because I kind of felt something was about to happen. I've seen it before. I've seen your face before where that that sort of happens. It, it really is most odd, but quite it's bizarre. it's happening more on, yeah, on, on every location we're going to. It's happening yeah. on, a, on a regular basis. basis. Thank you very much to everyone who's taken part over the last three days. Thank you to Julian and the team in Interactive who've been fantastic. Thank you also to the history experts, Richard Jones and say, to sorry, Richard Phillips. Yes, very quickly. Can I just say thank you so much to everybody in the audience and also to everybody that has been behind us, everybody that's come out on location. Thank you so much. We cannot do this program without you it means an awful lot to us so thank you thank you very and, much and well said to you as well thank you to uh, matthew smith richard jones richard felix Trivet, and of course derek agora and thank you to all of you as well because you've made this program exactly what it is which is the largest live interactive ghost hunt in the world every time we do this program it gets bigger and it gets better and i think even all of us are incredibly surprised at what we find and what actually goes on but we couldn't do this without you so we really really do thank you uh, because I can tell you that millions of people are now watching this program so from all of us I think we, we can agree we've had an amazing oh I yes. know but we've had an amazing three nights haven't we, we said, what did you think very oh, I thought it was fantastic but I'm looking forward to the next one there's more <laughs> most haunted most more most haunted live we'll be back very shortly until then bye bye <laughs>